Since the iPhone 12, Apple has equipped their phones with a feature known as MagSafe. MagSafe allows you to magnetically mount, charge and accessorize the iPhone. But what if you could add this feature to an older iPhone? The budget model iPhone SE for example, or even go against the grain by adding it to an Android device. Most devices that support wireless charging will in fact charge with a MagSafe charger, however they won't stay properly attached. Oddly, Samsung's attach much better than the older iPhone models without MagSafe hardware. Something in Samsung's wireless charging coil must make it somewhat magnetic, although still weak. I'm going to experiment with some aftermarket magnet attachments and Apple's own internal magnet system to see if I can add it to an unsupported phone. I'll be trying to add it on an iPhone 8, which shares an almost identical internal design to that of an iPhone SE 2nd and 3rd generation, along with a Samsung Galaxy Note Fan Edition. I'll start with the iPhone 8 and backdate Apple's MagSafe feature to this older model. In fact, I chose this phone specifically as it's the earliest iPhone equipped with wireless charging. I'll get the display removed to gain access to the internals of the phone. We'll need to remove everything in our way of the wireless charging coil, as that's where we'll need to make our modification. You can see this phone has been sweating around the earpiece cable. This phone has spent at least a few years in a box, but moisture has still made its way inside. I'll need to remove the battery, but to get better access to its removal tabs, I'll take out the Taptic Engine, Apple's fancy name for a vibration motor. Like an old car, this engine is leaking oil. I can't say as though I've ever seen a haptic motor do that before. I'll begin removing the adhesive on the battery. Apple has improved the rigidity of this adhesive in later models, reducing its chance of snapping, but that doesn't help us here. As soon as the adhesive caught the bottom of the battery while removing it, the tab snapped, leaving the battery firmly stuck in position. When these tabs work, they make the removal so much easier, but when they break, they make it more difficult. Thankfully, with the use of some alcohol injected around the perimeter of the battery, the adhesive can be softened, allowing for the battery to be pried free. Then it's just a matter of cleaning off the residual adhesive left behind. About 75% of the wireless charging coil is now visible, but we still can't modify it with the logic board in our way, so that's next to come out. There is one hidden Phillips screw beside the camera connector to look out for when unfastening the logic board. With all the cables and screws removed, the board can be pulled free. Now it's over to the heat plate, where I can heat up the back of the phone to aid the removal of the wireless charging coil. I'll need to use a thin metal tool to jimmy my way under the edge without causing any damage. Once you have an edge started, it's easy to work up the remainder of the perimeter. However, there is some adhesive in the center, so using some alcohol will help soften it enough so that the coil can be lifted free. It's now come time to add the MagSafe magnets. Apple's official magnets come in at 0.65mm thick, whereas an aftermarket ring is closer to a millimeter. Because the older iPhone lacks the larger cutout in the midframe to accommodate the magnets like an iPhone 12 would, we want the magnets as thin as possible to avoid issues when it comes time to close up the phone, as just a few millimeters can stop the phone from fitting back together properly. I'll trim off the alignment magnet as without its recess, it will lift up the battery even higher. In hindsight, I should have orientated the magnets with the opening accommodating the standoff, but I didn't notice it before sticking it down. But there's nothing to worry about, as I can just remove the one problematic magnet to allow the standoff to protrude. A dry run shows us the magnets are doing their job, so it's back in with the wireless charging coil. Its fitment is very good, even with the extra thickness of the magnets. And as the coil on this model is insulated, there was no issues with the magnets causing a short on the coil. Now it's just the matter of getting the phone back together.
With the phone back in one piece, it's time for a test. The phone snaps onto the MagSafe charger as if it was designed for it and charges without issue. The magnets are quite strong and support a landscape orientation too. So the upgrade is possible on the iPhone, but what about an Android phone? If anything, this upgrade should be easier to install as most Androids open from the back. It's over to the heat plate for this Galaxy Note Fan Edition for a few minutes to soften its adhesive. Then I can work around the perimeter of the phone to separate the back glass from the frame of the phone. Unlike the iPhone where we had to disassemble half the phone to be able to access the wireless charging coil, on this Samsung it's directly under this glass panel. Instead of using Apple's official magnet array found in their iPhones, this time I'll be using an aftermarket ring. I purchased a few of these and found some were thinner than others. Using the thinnest one, I positioned it upside down over the center of the coil before pressing the back panel down onto it, therefore correctly aligning the new magnet perfectly to the back glass. For this phone, I'll also be adding the positioning magnet as I believe there's room for it. But it's not strictly necessary and is only used for a select number of accessories. Now it's just the manner of getting some new adhesive installed and reattaching the back glass to the phone. But there's a problem. Unlike the iPhone, this Samsung won't charge. It displays the charge animation and even shows it's charging in the menu bar, but the percentage doesn't increase. In fact, it decreases faster than if it wasn't connected to this MagSafe dock. I thought it may have had something to do with the added magnet, so I removed the back glass and connected the phone without any additional magnet to find it still wasn't charging. But why? It charges without issue on a Google wireless charging dock, and in fact even charges on an aftermarket MagSafe charger, just not the official one. The iPhone charges fine with both the Apple dock and aftermarket MagSafe charger. Has Apple built in something to this dock which prevents it working with non-Apple devices, or is this purely just a hardware limitation on this specific Samsung phone? I tried with another Samsung, the Galaxy S10, and to my surprise, it charges fine on the stand. So it appears that retrofitting MagSafe isn't reliable on every device. The iPhone accepts the upgrade best, which shouldn't be a surprise, as it's an Apple standard. It also worked with my Galaxy S10 Plus. But based on my testing, not all Android devices will work reliably with the MagSafe retrofit. If you're wanting to attempt this upgrade, check to see if your device reliably charges with a MagSafe charger before fitting the magnets. And as a quick and easy option, you can just add the magnets to the exterior of the phone, despite it being visually unpleasant. If you're a phone repairer like myself, you may be interested in my application iTest, available for both iOS and Android. iTest provides the ability to test hardware functions of a phone or tablet, with both a semi-automatic mode or manual mode, allowing you to easily test functions that would otherwise be too complicated without the aid of such an application. These include things like the compass, gyroscope, proximity and light sensors, or even screen burn-in. At the end of testing, you can get a nice little overview of your results and easily share them if needed. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the custom tech playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.